Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to cover weak dominance and how it is different from strict dominance. First, let's review. A strategy is strictly dominated if a second strategy generates a strictly greater payoff regardless of the strategies of the other players. And our simplest, simplest example of this was in the Prisoner's Dilemma, where defect strictly dominates cooperate. That is, regardless of what the other player does, defection produces a strictly greater payoff than cooperation. So if you're going to defect, I want to defect. If you're going to cooperate, I still want to defect. No matter what you do, I'm going to want to defect. So defect strictly dominates cooperate. However, a strategy is weakly dominated if a second strategy generates at least as great of a payoff, regardless of the strategies of the other player. And at least is emphasized here because this does not rule out the possibility that some payoffs may actually be equal to each other, whereas others will be greater. So with strict dominance, we're using a strict inequality, and with weak dominance, we are using a weak inequality. And that's how we get the names strict dominance and weak dominance. We get them directly from those inequality signs. Now let's take a look at an example. So this is a 3x3 three three game, and we should find that middle weakly dominates up for player 1. And this is easy to verify if we isolate things. If player 2 moves right, then middle is worth 6, whereas up is only worth 3. If player 2 moves center, then middle is worth 4, whereas up is only worth 3. And if player 2 goes left, then player 1 is different, indifferent, I should say, between up and middle. So it's this last contingency that makes things weakly dominated here rather than strictly dominated. And if we want to take a look at this using the visual I have here, we have 6 as being greater than or equal to 3, 4 as being greater than or equal to 3, and 2 as being greater than or equal to 2. So in past cases, we might have just had just the simple strict inequality sign where we have uh, 4 is greater than 3 rather than greater than or equal to 3. But because of this last case right here where we have 2 being equal to 2, we have to use these weak inequality signs, which means middle is going to weakly dominate up instead of strictly dominate up. So we're going to try removing up as we did for strictly dominated strategies. And now we should see that center strictly dominates left for player 2. Again, if we do this in isolation, this is going to be straightforward. If player 1 plays middle, then center earns one more point than left does. And if player 1 plays down, then center, earns, uh, center nets three more points than uh, left would. So this 6 is greater than this 3, and this 4 is greater than this 3, so center strictly dominates left. And from our rules about strictly dominated strategies, we know that we can just get rid of left. And now we see that center strictly dominates right for player 2 as well, because 4 is greater than 2.5 and 6 is greater than 5, just like that. Easy enough. So we remove that from the game, which leaves us with just two outcomes left, and from here it's pretty easy to see that player 1 will go middle instead of down, because he'll get 4 points for going middle, whereas he'll only get 2.5 for going down. So middle center appears to be our solution. And if you look back to the original game and plot out the best responses, which we won't do here because it's a little bit time consuming, uh, you'll find that middle center is the unique equilibrium for the larger game as well. And I do encourage you to actually pause this and go through the process of finding the best responses, which we covered in another video, and you'll see that, in fact, that the, this is true and I'm not making this up. So you might think that that's great and we can use weak dominance just like we did strict dominance. But that's actually not the case. And we now turn to this game. It's called Selton's Game to see why. And I'm using this one because we'll come back to it later when we get to extensive form games and subgame perfect equilibrium. So it'll be good to have uh, practice with it beforehand. If we apply our weak dominance approach, then we see that left weakly dominates right for player 2. That is, if player 1 moves up, player 2 is strictly better going to the left, uh, because this 1 is going to be greater than this 0. But it's in the second case where if player 1 moves down, then 2 is going to be equal to this 2, so we have to use these weak inequality signs. So we can say here that left weakly dominates right. So if we eliminate right from the game, we're now down to just these two outcomes, and now player 1 is certainly going to go up because 3 points is greater than 2, which leaves us with this up-left outcome. And if you thought that this up-left outcome was the equilibrium to the original game, well, you're kind of right. It is an equilibrium. And I encourage you to check the best responses to verify this. That will go a little bit quicker in this 2x2 game than in the 3x3 game before. However, it's not the only equilibrium. 
consider down right. This is also a mutual best response. If player two is going right, then player one would not want to deviate and go up instead and earn zero. While player, well, if player one is moving down, then player two is indifferent between left and right. So this two is greater than this zero, so player one wouldn't want to move away from this outcome. And player two doesn't really care. He's gonna, or excuse me, she's gonna earn the same thing if she moved left than if she just stayed right. So she can plausibly just stay here and not really care about moving. And she can be happy doing that because she's gonna get these two points and she's not gonna do any better by moving. And so that means that downright is a pure strategy Nash equilibrium as well. So there are actually two Nash equilibria to Selton's game, up left and down right. And notice that player one prefers playing the up left equilibrium, while player two prefers playing the down right equilibrium. So it really isn't crystal clear which outcome we should expect from this game. Let's get to our takeaway point. Any equilibrium in a reduced game after iterated elimination of weakly dominated strategies, that was the process that we did for the first game, the 3x3 three three game. Well, that equilibrium to the reduced game will be an equilibrium in the original game as well. However, you may or may not delete other equilibria in the process as we saw in the second game, Selton's game, the two by two game that we looked at afterward. So you can use weakly dominated strategies as a shortcut to finding some equilibria, but you're always stuck going back to the original game and checking to see if there are any others. The moral of the story is that you need to be careful whenever you use weak dominance.